the bladder fills up, okay, because it's normally going to be like this. And as my bladder gets bigger, it's going to lay down my uterus. Okay, it's going to lay down my uterus. That is called antiversion. Okay, antiversion. If my fundus is pointing towards my rectum, uh, it's retroversion. Retroversion. If there is a 90 degree angle, not at the vagina, not at the vagina, but at the end of the cervix, the lower uterine segment, if there's a 90 degree angle there, it's called antiflexion. It has to do with the cervix. Okay, so here's my normal uterus. Okay, antiversion. Here is a normal uterus with a 90 degree flexion at the cervix. Anti-flexion. Okay? So here's my uterus. See, that's the normal It's pointing right? towards the back. It's pointing towards my rectum. Retroversion. 90 degree flexion of the cervix. Retro. Flexion. Okay, now what were you going to ask? That's the normal, right? Should be. They're all normal. Oh, they're all normal. That's but different. most of them are anti flexion, anti version. Oh. Mm -hmm. They can be to the left or they can be to the right. Levo flexion. Um, I can't remember the other one. Levo. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Okay? So these are what they are. Here's one Mixes. with retroversion and retroflexion. Deflection means a, 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 a flexion at the cervix. Okay? And those are what you're going to see. So C and E look similar, but just a little different because they. Blows more, right? Yeah, there's more of a, uh, a curvature there. Because mm -hmm. this is what you're going to see. So it's not unusual for us to look and see the what? The bladder. Because sometimes it completely curls up on itself. Okay? Anterior uterus, posterior uterus. Anterior uterus, posterior uterus anterior uterus, posterior uterus, anterior uterus, posterior uterus, anterior uterus, posterior uterus. If this uterus is completely on itself, your anterior is still your anterior. And it's not unusual for them to do this. Here's my cervix. Here's my endometrium. Here's my cervical canal. This is still anterior because if it was flipped up to antiversion, it would be anterior. And this is, even though it's more anterior, if this was flipped up, it would be my posterior uterus. Anterior always stays anterior because most of them are anti-version. So it doesn't matter what shape the uterus is and where it's going, anterior still has to be anterior. Got it? Okay, so if I, if I show this, I would say number one anterior uterus. If I was labeling a thyroid. Okay? Because if you say anterior posterior, if you say posterior uterus, okay, what's the next sonographer going to do when she follows up with you? She's going to look posterior and say, what happened to the fibroid? 
That's why we have to keep anterior, anterior, and posterior, mm -hmm. posterior. So the anterior is the one, is the in the front of the uh, uh, body. Anterior is front of the body, but it doesn't matter. You still have to keep anterior, anterior, mm -hmm. no matter how the uterus is in the body. So I thought that I would call because no, 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 absolutely not. Fibroids can be found anywhere, but we have to document where those fibroids are. Okay? And then uh, when uh, the lady, uh, she drank a lot of water to do the uh, abdominal. Yes. But you know, is this, in this way, there is complication will happen in the shape of the, uh, the uh, uterus? No. It's going to lay the uterus so I'm more 90 degrees to the anatomy. Because here is an antiversion. I fill up my bladder, my uterus lays down. So now I'm 90 degrees to the anatomy. Here I am perpendicular to the anatomy. And because of the way ultrasound hits, then I'm going to have artifacts and I won't be able to see my lower uterine segment because of physics, mm. okay? I mean, in this case, the same. Same. Okay. This, you do not need a full bladder, mm. okay? That's because it like. doesn't do any good, Yeah. yeah okay? Right. It doesn't do any good because mm. it, it can't displace the yeah. uterus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, also this one too, right? Anything okay. retro, yeah. you don't need a full bladder for. Okay. Anything anti-version or anti-flexion, you need a full bladder. Okay? Now, we're still going to take them with a the full bladder. But usually, because of the way it's shaped, the bladder will also cause artifacts into the, into the uterus because of physics. Yeah. In this mm -hmm. case, we uh, tell the patient to go and uh, 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 okay. go to the restroom yeah. to empty the bladder and uh, it will be uh, no we're not going to take that time huh? I'm, we're only going to tell the patient to go empty their bladder when we're getting ready for a transvaginal right. exam right. Oh. I'm not going to tell them to release their bladder while I'm doing a trans abdominal because why because I might see the ovaries with what somewhat bladder they have. Sometimes it's halfway, sometimes it's a quarter, sometimes it's like over full, you know, because it helps me see the adnexa. And I'm looking for the ovaries in the adnexa. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Is this going to be true? Where would the bladder be? The bladder is going to be here. Because the bladder is usually the cervix and the bladder and the vagina are pretty much the same. And uh, Maru was asking me, how do we know the difference between the vagina and the bladder? I mean, the vagina and the cervix. We really can't because this is a continuous line. Okay? We kind of guesstimate where the cervix starts. Mm -hmm. Now, the cervix is going to have meat on other either side of it. Mm -hmm. The vagina will not. Mm -hmm. But you find this line and you line it up so that way you can get a good image of the cervix. Mm -hmm. Now, when we do transvaginal, when we do a transvaginal, we either want to watch it as it goes in or watch it as it goes out because I might have, here, these are Gardner duct cysts. They're a normal embryological incidental finding, okay? Now, if I have cysts inside of my cervix, those are called Nebothian cysts. Mm -hmm. Everyone that is sexually active 
has them both the insist. They can be simple or they can be complex. Okay. Here's the uterine layers, the parametrium, also known as the serosa. It's the outer layer. Uh, Barnaz, talk to me about the, um, let me go up so we can write notes. So, let me add, oh it's not gonna let me. What is the layer, Mara, of the, the, the peritoneum that encloses my female organs? What is that, that fold of peritoneum called? over my uterus, uterus, it's called what? Okay, that's a broad ligament. If it's over the ovary, what's it called? Meso. Meso ovarian. So those we can call If it's over the fallopian tubes, what's it called? Suspensory. Meso. Okay. Okay. So anytime you talk about the broad ligament, the prefix is meso. Oh, okay. That's the easiest way to remember. Meso prefix. Is that a prefix, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so in this ligaments, all these are ligaments. These are ligaments. not ligaments. They are just under the broad ligament. No. Cut layers. Anterior broad ligament, posterior broad ligament. Inside of this, I've got my uterus, the mesometria. I've got the, my meso peaks. I've got my meso ovarian. It's all inside of here. Okay? So it's a layers of It's layers of it's, it's no. It, I wouldn't call it layers. I would call it the broad ligament that covers the uterus is called the mesometrium. The areas. Areas. The broad ligament that covers the ovary is called meso ovarian. The broad ligament that covers the fallopian tube is called mesosalpinx. Okay? That's 
kind of a hard thing to to teach because it's like inside of us. Okay. So okay. Now originate at the upper so the interstitial is the first from inner to outer. You have your interstitial. It is not in your book. You have to know it. That inserts into the cornua of the uterus. If you have a, an ectopic in that area, then you will have to have a hysterectomy. The isthmus is the same thing as the lower uterine segment. Oh, no, we're in the wrong one. I'm talking about the <coughs> Then you have the ampulla. Then you have the infundibulum. That's where the fembri are. That's what sucks the, the egg up into the fallopian tube. The ovaries are almond shaped. You have two layers. You have the cortex, which is the out, outer layer. And uh, medulla, which is the inner layer. Okay? They're located lateral to the uterus. The ovaries are attached to the uterus by the ovarian ligament. The ligament that supports the ovary to the lateral sidewall is the suspensory ligament. And the suspensory ligament that attaches the uterus to the pelvis? No. It attaches the ovary to the lateral sidewall. So if you look at your picture, if you look at this picture, here's the suspensory ligament that is attached to the ovary. Here is my suspensory ligament. Here is my ovarian ligament. Got it? Okay. The suspensory ligament holds the ovary lateral. The ovarian ligament holds the ovary medially. 